I use born. Okay, people. <laughs> so I was trying to start this segment cooking with you in my kitchen. I was trying to go ahead and I just burn a pot. You see, a chef like me can be the worst too. So if you think sometimes things go wrong in your kitchen, remember me. Things go wrong in my kitchen too. We're humans, not machines. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, the I mean, I don't even know why the fire alarm didn't go in the building. Um, but that's what I was trying to do. A red wine sauce. Why I'm doing our red wine sauce? Because we are at the end of the year. And Christian Catholic boys like me, we celebrate Christmas. And I remember always my mom, my dad, at the end of the year, towards Christmas, we will have the typical bottles of red or white wine that we never really finish. And we put the cork and we put somewhere around the kitchen and we forget. And it's good to end the year kind of finishing everything you have so you can start the new year kind of new and clean. And this is why this recipe is perfect for this. So you see, I've been boiling here the wine. I've been boiling a lot of wine. Even I over boil the wine and I reduce it is when you burn it because whatever is the solids in the wine, they end burning. And you put the wine. And this is something you can do with all the white and red wine you have. And then, this is simple. You get sugar, and more or less you're going to be adding, I don't know, uh, 200 grams, um, uh, five, six, seven ounces for every quart of wine, or one spoon for every cup of wine. Just whatever, just add and taste. If it's too sweet, add more wine. If it's not sweet enough, add more sugar. You see, I hate to give recipes to the inch and the ounce because it's better that you learn how to fix the own things on your own. So I add the sugar. And now this is going to become a great reduction of red wine that is going to become a syrup because the sugar is going to melt. And here you have something like this exceptional and you're going to be able to use it for a lot of different things. But what is the thing you're going to use it for for the recipe I'm doing today? What do we eat in Christmas desserts that they are always so heavy, so sugary, so much flour, uh, pecans, because we keep eating the pecan from Thanksgiving into Christmas. Uh, whatever is what you're having is always very heavy. And I'm showing you one dessert that actually is the contrary. It's a fruit and it's very light. And those are oranges. No better fruit in the middle of winter than citrus and these oranges are unbelievable so take a look what you do you kind of make a cut very deep into the orange and another one in the bottom and then you're gonna go with a knife and you're gonna go very deep so you take all not only the orange rind but the white flesh which is bitter out of the orange and then you keep going down with the knife going in a curve around the orange and if you think this is difficult, only do what I'm trying to show you here. In this place where the white of the orange meets the orange part of the orange uh, flesh, you follow that as the guide. The only thing you have to do is let the knife do the work. And at the end, you're going to have a perfectly peeled orange with none of the white bitter part where Literally, this orange is getting naked. And once in a while, you look at the wine, so you make sure you don't burn the wine for a second time, which has happened to me too. And then look at what I have. A perfectly cooked orange with none of the white, none of the bitter, but all the juicy flesh. I know you can do that, right? Other thing you can do is like some supermarkets they sell you already the oranges like this but you're gonna pay far away more and it's not gonna be as fresh so do what i'm showing you and you'll see you'll be ready for the best dessert in the history of your christmas so now this is pale i have two i'm not gonna do more because right now i'm only trying to show you a recipe and this is very important because i told you the white is very bitter I'm gonna put the orange part of some of these 
uh, peel of the orange against the cutting board and I'm gonna go down deep to take all the white flesh, all the white flesh, almost all the white flesh. I'll do a second time because I think I didn't go deep enough. So you make sure that your hand is flat over the blade. You make sure that the knife is in between the orange rind, the orange cess, and your hand. And at the end, you have a perfect piece of orange peel without the white. And you're going to put this where? In the wine. And now the wine is happy because it's finally meeting something else beyond grapes. It's meeting oranges. Why? Because grapes and oranges don't grow together usually. And now the wine is like, you see all the bubbles? It's like, hey, what's going on here? Wow, it's a party. Now in this moment, careful, because if it's too, 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 too reduced, it's a syrup, you can burn yourself. But I'm a chef, I'm not going to burn myself. Oh my God, you see how good this is? This is already done. Velvety. I can reduce a little bit more. When it gets cold is when I get thicker. But this is almost ready. And this is the moment that you do something. Because red wine and cinnamon and orange go so well together, you're going to add a little bit of the cinnamon. And this is already almost done. Actually, too quick. I think I'm going to add some more of the red wine. I'm going to keep it boiling. Because now I have this, the oranges. And I'm going to slice them like this, and I'm gonna put them in the plate, like that. The other one, one, two, and three. And then I have something like it's super, super, super Christmas-like, because the colors, not only the color of the ruby red wine, but something I love, pomegranates. My mom used to love pomegranates, and she will always tell me that you had to be careful because if you were not careful, the pomegranates will make a mess in your hands, in your clothes, everywhere, because the red ruby use of the pomegranates really, really, really can get to stain anything. And what you try to do, as you see, I'm not cutting through the pomegranate because if I'm cutting through the pomegranate, I'm breaking the tiny ruby seeds where the juices are going to be start flowing all over the place. So what I'm trying to do is really with the help of my hands, not to cut through the pomegranate, but to break the pomegranate. And the pomegranate is like a firecracker, loves to be opened up. You see, I didn't break any of the pomegranates. They are all whole and they are happy because they are free. Yes, and in this moment, that's what you do. You go and you can use, with the help of your hands, try to separate all the ruby pomegranates. This is a perfect thing for children. Oh my God, this is overcooking already. Great, I didn't burn it. And if I burn it, I'm gonna lie to you and you don't know because you can do many things with me in this podcast, but you cannot smell what I'm cooking yet. So I'm lying to you. This is cooked to perfection. Maybe a little bit born. No, to perfection. This was a red wine barn sauce. <laughs> when things don't go as you planned, you change the name of the recipe, people. Come on. So here, all right, I have the, the pomegranates, but because I have an, a great team of people, the pomegranates, they are already cooked for me. But you get, what you don't want is any also of this white part of the pomegranates, because this is super, super, super bitter. You don't want that. But then you have the pomegranates, I had more here. Bingo, we are in business. What am I doing to do one recipe? So imagine you are doing a lot of red wine and the red wine is still boiling. And you're getting ready for not only Christmas, the 24th, the 25th, but let's say you're getting ready for the most festive moment of what Christmas will be. Imagine you're getting ready for the most festive moment. Yes, Año Nuevo, 31st of December. And where I come from, Spain, it's an amazing tradition. It's an amazing tradition that, as I'm using here, oranges, what do we have September, October, November, even getting into December? Grapes. And in Spain, we love grapes. In Spain, we love grapes because also we love wine. So the grape culture is very big. And the amazing thing about this is that on the 31st of December, my friends, everybody right at 12 o'clock is the tradition as the bells are marking the, the 12th bell, bang, bang, all the way to 12, families will gather around the TV or around the radio, 
or in absence of radio and TV, somebody will get a pen and start making the sound. And with every gong, or whatever you call it in your language, you eat a grape. And so, 12 grapes. Long tradition goes back to the 1800s, probably beyond. But the story is tell that was a winemaker that was trying to sell his grapes because he then used them all to make the wine and began this tradition. And I think it was a very smart thing because right now it's a tradition that we don't only use in Spain but many other parts. But this was my favorite moment, but something happens. In the old days, we had grapes without seeds. The grapes, they all had seeds. Like these ones, the Concord grapes, they have seeds. Take a look. I didn't like the seeds. Because if you ate them with the seeds, you could die. You could die because 12 grapes in your mouth when you were a child, you could die. The seeds, the grapes, you could die. That was a very dangerous tradition. I'm telling you, you could, oh my God, all the, all the grapes in your throat. But we came up with an amazing method. Obviously, the 31st of December going into the 1st of January, everybody will be drinking cava or champagne, but in Spain we call it cava. And we'll go and we'll open the cava and we'll serve ourselves a glass. And this is something that was fascinating to me. Everybody goes and throws the cork garbage, and you get this piece of metal and you throw a garbage, no way, Jose. What you do is you will get this and you will start turning the metal ring in the bottom non-stop. And without you realizing, you will see that as you keep turning, whatever is one of the edges of this circle ring in the bottom of the champagne bottle, let's see, it's a long time I don't do this, you'll keep doing this until at the end you will see that you will have a very tiny kind of circle like it was a knot that will be small enough to be smaller than the seeds inside the grape. And once you got this kind of new tool, oh my God, I'm growing older. Oh, this used to be easier. In that moment, when this will be small enough, and you will turn this like 90 degrees, like it becomes like a spoon, you will get a grape, you will go nicely inside, you will find the seeds, and you will take the seeds out one by one. This was great, especially if you were cooking in the kitchen and making dishes like pheasant with grapes and things like that. So this is an amazing tool, my friends, that everybody can be using in their lives to take the seeds out without breaking the seeds. You're going to tell me about Jose, why you don't go and peel the grape, take the grape out and take the seeds out? Really? Why you want to be so nasty to the grapes, people? This is a way to make the grape look like a grape without destroying the grape, but taking the seeds away. And this for me and my brothers was kind of a very fun job to do. Yeah, we destroy a lot of grapes, but quite frankly, the fun we had was unbelievable. So I'm giving you this tip and use it for whatever you want, but I'm only telling you that sometimes it's some things in the kitchen that we keep throwing garbage that they have amazing uses beyond what we think. Are you with me? So, one, two, no, I'm not here in the 12. But I hope this year you do this tradition. You should do it twice. At six, if you are in the East Coast, because in Spain it's 12. And then you do it at 12 when it's 12 here. And you celebrate the new year twice. That's what we do it in my house. And it's fun. You start the party at 6. And then you keep going on at 12. That's the way to do it. OK, let me finish the recipe. Are you with me? First, I think I deserve by now a glass of this cava. So take a look what we have, my friends. We have the orange. We have the best syrup in the history of mankind of wine. We're going to put it right in the bottom. Take a look, the colors. The bright orange with the velvety, ruby, deep wine color. And used to finish, my friends. You come with the pomegranates, you put them on top of the oranges. And then, why not, you get some of this 
crystals of salt mild on odor and yes yes don't worry works a touch of oil and my friends there you have an amazing dessert to finish any night during your christmas or actually for the rest of the year if you have good oranges this works i am jose andres i endorse this message and now you know what to do with grapes with seeds without seeds with leftover wine and especially when you have amazing pomegranates and even more great oranges all right hopefully i'll see you next week i oh, know stay with me i'm not going anywhere